Hello, Monsters Abound here, and welcome back to part four of my Stellaris campaign with the Albion Commonwealth. Last time we met the Agarian Compact and the Zeltec Horde, both of whom hate our guts, and learned that the people of the Commonwealth see beyond colour of skin when it comes to politics, be you black, white, or murderous floating turtle jellyfish. As long as your message or tentacle hits the right note, they'll vote for you. Apparently. Starting to think democracy is inherently a bad idea. The Commonwealth has expanded out into the stars and found only very grumpy buggers and one semi-raging floating turtle jellyfish. Will episode 4 see us make any additional friends or just more enemies? So let's take a quick look at how the Commonwealth is doing. So we've got three planets, of course, starting off with Parliament, our capital. As you can see, capital's full. There's no room at the inn. But it is bringing in uh, 12 energy, 18 minerals, 6 unity, and 12, 6, and 5 of the research, and 3 food as well. So that's pretty good. Uh, Austin is still alive. Austin, how old are you? Austin's only 75. So as you can see, age is over 80. So when someone is over 80, it, they start to have a potential chance to drop dead. Uh, we can probably have we'll have, have a look at uh, Mohammed Pool here. See, he's got a went one percent chance to drop dead every single month. That is terrifying. Jesus, poor old Mohammed. Um, he is he's he's maxed rank though. He's our only scientist who is maxed rank. He's also the most likely to drop dead any any one time. In fact, all of our scientists are quite old, as is our only governor, um, Bugag Bug Bag Bagugi. Bakugi, Bakugi, uh, who is our admiral, our Zabir admiral, is uh, yep, he's he's the youngest, at only forty-two. So out of our leadership, we've only got one young person, and it just happens to be a floating turtle jellyfish. So I feel like the younger generation doesn't have so much of a say in the running of the Commonwealth, unless they happen to be. A floating turtle jellyfish but there, there's only one floating turtle jellyfish in the entire commonwealth and he's angry he's, he's a mercenary warrior so um yeah okay well that's that's, that's probably fine so we got parliament we got wolverhampton as well uh it's, it's costing us energy it's bringing some minerals and some unity and a little bit of research there it's uh, it's still growing uh we do have one person with a bizarre haircut just growing up over there we could uh, potentially clear these out but i don't really well we could get some more minutes to be honest minerals isn't so much an issue at the moment it's energy for me is uh really the main it's really the main thing and then of course we've got cardiff which is bleak so that uh, it's not as habitable and it doesn't bring in as much food but we do have a weird alien toy factory which is definitely not creepy and weird and that brings in six six one one four and eleven so that's bringing in quite a lot of our uh, engineering research it's very nice it's costing us a lot of food though probably need to do something well food to six so you know what it's, it's probably all right in fact what i'm let's build let's build a mineral processing plant there yes i don't care about suppressing the food suppress the shit out of that food oh we could get some energy here uh do i want that I can never decide whether it's worth to build the energy. I, I guess the energy grid brings in just as much as the power plant and also increases the energy credit, so... Build that, I guess. Let's go with that bad boy. Uh, we've also got Home Fleet, of course. Home Fleet, we've, we've upgraded it a little bit. So it's now got uh, five of our destroyers. We're actually upgrading uh, Home Fleet at the moment, and uh, Bakugi is, of course, in command of the fleet. Thank goodness. Uh, we do also have lots of stations. Now, Will, do I was thinking about maybe launching a strike on the Midari, but I might just leave them, to be honest. As we've got we've got plenty of expansion opportunities, especially considering we've got wormhole travel on the way. In just 23 months, Nadia Hussein is going to lock that bad boy down. And we're going to have that one. That's going to be very nice. And if you, I just don't, I just don't think a preemptive strike is, is worth it. What I think we're going to do, let's upgrade Wildor Station. Let's do that. And what I might do is upgrade Wolverhampton and Cardiff Station as well, so we can get more of these trading hubs because each one of those is worth six energy. So that's another, that's another twenty-four energy we could get. 
from upgrading both these star bases and then building trading hubs on them. So that sounds like a good idea. It'll hopefully get us out of our little deficit. Uh, and I do... I want to settle... Pa Paradi Paradida. Parada? But yeah, that one. Um, now, obviously, a little bit distressing. There was a little a little genocide here as the, the, the peaceful peaceful inhabitants of the planet were reduced into a fine goo that now sort of litters some of the, the regions of the planet. Obviously, that is very... That's, that's distressing. Any level of genocide is always distressing. Um, but I think it's fair to say there's, there's no point crying... You know, nothing can be done to help them. No point crying over spilt milk. You know, it, it's done. It's in the past. Let's move on after clearing up this toxic wasteland just basically scooping the remains of of the peaceful people and i don't know firing them into the sun or something uh it's it's what they would have wanted potentially we don't know maybe that's how they dealt with their dead we do, we don't know we've got no we've got no basis but that's what i think they'd, they'd like so that's what we're going to do we're going to settle that just as in fact it's uh it's a bit shit isn't it there's only like three food here everything else empty Hmm. Oh well. Uh, but we're definitely going to grab that one. We've got some more potential planets over here we could grab. Looking very nice. So oh, we've got another one over here. And we've got habitats down here as well. We've got another habitat over here. So these are abandoned habitats we're going to grab. And we just I've got uh, the cedar wood. Layla Mills. She's just uh, she's stubborn. But she she's meticulous, so that's good. She's meticulously stubborn, stubbornly meticulous. One of them. Uh, she's waiting at the wormhole because in two years, just two, she's going to just put her feet up for two years. In two years, we will have access to wormholes, and she's going to be only able to just travel through that wormhole and seek out probably hostile new races for us to border. So very exciting there. Uh, so that's the cedarwood. Got another science ship over here. He's still exploring. To be honest, we've kind of run out of places to explore as uh, the Igarians, the Igarian Compact, they don't like us very much. The Madari Horde don't like us very much. The Zabir Raiders don't like us very much. So basically we're bordered uh, by people who don't like us very much. Now we do have these wormholes, so we need to explore through them and find more people who don't like us very much. But that's what we need to do next. So that's the next step. We just need to finish off uh, just searching this little pocket over here. I don't think we're going to find very much because the Igarians probably have already uh, scanned all this. But uh, once that wormhole tech is done, then we've got brand new stars to explore. So that, that's going to be good. Oh, hello. The Zabir Raiders apparently want to talk to us. Human weaklings, our warriors are on their way to plunder your systems. Face them in battle if you can muster the courage or cower in fear until they've had their fill of your riches. You can, of course, offer tribute now to spare yourselves from the coming onslaught. If it is sufficient, our warriors may be compelled to turn back. Um have some minerals and bugger off a pity i suppose i will have to look elsewhere for entertainment then your people are safe for the moment at least oh i'm being bullied by turtle jellyfish it's the oh it's just how demeaning so we've put, picked up improved structural integrity so that's increased our defense platform hull points by 500 which is going to make uh wildor station very tanky and oh plasma thrusters they would be nice on the other hand cruisers oh but corvette build speed well or teldar crystals do we have any teldar crystals i don't think we do there are some over here i would like to grab them because i feel like teldor and aldar crystals in the same system would be good to have um but it's not urgent. So I think we're going to go Plasma Thruster. An advanced form of electronic propulsion. Plasma Thrusters afford ships greater sublight speeds and maneuverability. That sounds right up my street. Apparently we've received a transmission from the independent space station of the Zura Corp. They appear to have trans translated our language. Oh, hello. Um, welcome to Zura Corp. We are a business conglomerate operating out of the Hassler system, specializing in the trade of minerals food and energy the very building blocks of civilization as we like to say, say here at Zuracorp. please do not hesitate to contact us if you're interested in making a good deal well met uh, where are they 
Must be around here somewhere. This, this makes me suggest, uh, makes me think that the wormholes probably lead over to this side of the, the galaxy. That'd be my guess. Who's insulted me? Zeltec Horde. Our mental network is vast, giving us access to thoughts and ideas from every corner of our empire, but not a single entity has ever seen anything that would lend merit to your tragic existence. Fair enough. It's all right. Uh, yeah, so Zuricot must be over here somewhere. That'd be my guess. Uh, and that's I think that's where the wormholes go, but we only need to wait another seven months. Well, in fact, another one month for um, fleet... Interstellar fleet traditions. Knowledge is the key to the universe. Thank you. Okay, so we grab that one. Uh, let's pick up. I would like more star bases, but do I want to clear these blockers? Well, hmm. defense army damage isn't really urgent. I don't know about these things. Okay, let's. I could always build two more star bases, but more star bases is more good. That's my thinking. It's quite cheap as well. It's not too bad, is it? Okay, uh, well, all right, let's, let's get, let's get, let's get, select, no, I don't really need that. Okay, let's get the, the stellar expansion. Our future lies in the sea of stars. Now, it should be noted around uh, Ferrothon here, we've got this planet, however you pronounce, how would you ever pronounce that? Pernikatai, Pernikatai, anyway, the point is we've built, we've built a little station just around the planet observation post so that we can keep an eye on what they're doing now they are in an early space age and the problem is that they could potentially jump to uh, FTL at any point and that would that would then create a new empire now it would be an empire who's obviously nowhere near as advanced as I am however it would being that they are uh, materialist and xenophobic there we go xenophobic um, 6534 so what it would they would probably close borders with me which means i couldn't then travel uh further into the galaxy now that would obviously be a bit, bit, bit of a problem so we've got several options for what we could actually do now that we've got this observation post so currently we're just passively observing them we're just peeping through their windows when they're asleep watching them breathe that kind of thing the natives are studied unknowingly from a safe distance and every effort is made to avoid cultural contamination that would give us eight society research or alternatively aggressive observation the natives are aggressively studied and live specimens are frequently collected and probed to learn as much it doesn't say probe but i'm just gonna we, we would we would definitely probe the balls out of them um to learn as much as possible about their biology and culture that would give us 10 uh, society research or indoctrination through subtle influencing of their society and culture the natives can be brought around to our way of thinking now that would incre that would cost us some energy but increase our society research and potentially get rid of their um, xenophobic tendencies I think I'm probably going to do that so let's indoctrinate the little buggers and get them on our side that's my thinking I would like to have them in my empire after we've you know messed with their brains well unfortunately Mohammed Paul's luck has run out he's dropped dead that one percent chance always gets you in the end so we need someone to replace him what's this over here space amoeba hunters that's more of those guys okay no fine um so science book science face is over here now we need a new a new scientist do we get uh let's see we've got ronnie morrison Cleo, Cleo, that that one uh leader lifespan you're still you're 40 already reuben reuben park he's just eager he just he just he's just very excited to be involved he's quite young No, he's not. He's 42. Um, I'm thinking Na Chow. Na Chow? Na Chow, you are, you, you're going to live 25 years longer than everyone else. So everyone else drops dead at about 80. So I think you'll be more like 105. 
so let's get you. You got funky hair, but that's okay. Let's pop you in there. You are our new scientist. You are going to go out and explore. I mean, Mohammed's seat is probably not even cold yet, is it? He's, he's still probably slightly warm, and uh, she's just immediately replaced him. But that's that's life in in science fleet. That's what happens. Okay, we have wormhole travel. A naturally occurring subspace wormhole is a fickle thing, and its fluctuating energy levels typically make it impossible to travel safely between linked apertures. There are always ways to temporarily stabilize its matrix, however. Okay, so we're going to grab... Uh, ooh, let's... I'm tempted to get UV lasers, but shields might be nice. Auxiliary... Auxiliary fire control. Um... It's quite cheap, though. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go UV lasers. Get on the UV lasers. Okay, so we now can travel through wormholes. So first things first, we're going to send the HMS Cedarwood to explore this natural wormhole. So we're going to find out where it goes. We found that the wormhole in the Yon system, which is on our side, is connected to the Baranic system. Which is over here. Ah, and there is the Artesian troop. So yes, it looks like we contacted them because they were through the wormhole, even though we couldn't actually travel. Okay, so let's send you to survey that system. As you can see, we are now traveling across the galaxy through the wormhole. Very exciting. What will we find on the other side? Oh, who knows? Apparently we can't see it. That's fine. Okay, there we are. We found the other... And it's, it's pretty boring. It is pretty boring. But that's okay. We're going to send the construction ship, the HMS Mackerel, through to Baranik. And once we've surveyed this, we can then start building a star base there and get our little foothold on the other side of the galaxy. Apparently we've met someone in the... SCAT system. Okay. Where? Interesting. Is it, though? Is it really interesting? Who are they? They look like... They are an empire. They are an insectoid empire. Somewhere... Oh, this side, the wormhole. Interesting. Okay. So we might have some competition for these planets. We're going to have to move fast. Having thought about our little excursion to the other side of the galaxy, we might need more construction and science ships. So let's get a new science ship up. And a new construction ship. Let's get those two on the go. Because it could come in useful, especially since our third ship got blown up. But it happens. Alien nation is hailing us. So we've received a transmission from the United Zakplot Za Za Council. Hello. You are erudite explorers of direct democracy. You are fanatic, xenophile, and materialist, so you're actually going to lot for once we found someone who isn't trying to kill us. Greetings from the United Zack Plot Council. Chancellor Frack Ulam is our elected representative, but in truth, all citizens have a voice in our government. We strive to better ourselves through technology and by studying the alien cultures we encounter as we explore the galaxy. Um, Martha Khan speaks on behalf of the Commonwealth people. Huzzah! Uh, yeah, we, we met you. Thanks. Thanks for that. Okay. Okay, they're over there. Now, we could carve ourselves out a little empire here. We could, like, a little enclave. Now, at least they're not going to kill us. So that's good. We could actually be quite friendly with these guys. Plus 40. The human mind and the Zakplot mind complement each other. Our intellectual efforts will be greater than the sum of our parts. How very true, um, whoever balls you are. What do you actually do? You are conformist, quick learners, and decadent. Okay. 
sure that's fine okay so they're over there we've got the agarian compact down there and the midari horde who ah we need to upgrade wildor station don't we um more guns more guns more guns and uh, target uplink computers that's going to increase weapon range by 50 percent. that sounds pretty good to me so let's go for target uplink computers get that going uh, we can get some more defenses, so let's do lats, because more defenses, more good. Money is a massive issue, but we do have some trading hubs coming online very soon, so that should be okay. Uh, so far, so good. So our new science ship is ready, the HMS Franklin. So we need someone to go in there. Uh, Reuben's still around, we could grab Reuben. Although, Isabel Hall... She's, a, she's got a spark of genius. Isabel Hall, you're in. You're in. Um, to be honest, I could probably switch you with someone researching, but... Who do we have? Uh, how old are you? 78, 79, 79. You are all about to drop dead, aren't you? Okay, well, let's... Okay, let's... For, for the moment, let's put... Isabel Hall in the HMS Franklin. We've also got a new construction ship called the HMS Dingledale, which is the best name. Uh, so let's get Isabel. You're going to come through the wormhole. Move over here. And the Dingledale, you're also going to come over here. There we go. Um, I would like more energy. Uh, we've got some energy here we could potentially hoover up. So, oh, some energy over here we could hoover up as well. So that's 15 energy we could grab. Let's do that. Because I, I really, I'm really hurting for energy right now. And I, maybe I should, should I colonize Paradeda? I think, I don't like putting my planets in a sector so soon i was hoping we'd have a little bit more um control but we don't mm -mm -mm. Uh, well that's the station not the planet there we go um i guess i could put i, I could put wolverhampton in a sector couldn't i so I need to get my I'll get my energy under control and then we'll colonize Parad Parad that one. So we've discovered Barra Baranic. That's all surveyed. Uh we're going to send the cedarwood to survey sort of over here, I think. Let's do that. And the Franklin. You can come and survey these ones. Sort of head in this direction, I think. Let's do that. And we're definitely going to have the HMS Mackerel. It's going to build a starbase there just to lay claim to that end of the wormhole. Okay, so we've got an election coming up, and it looks like um, the, the, the Turtle Jellyfish party has really been making inroads. He's gone from 17% to 24%. Who knew a floating jellyfish would be... Turtle jellyfish would be so popular with the Commonwealth people. I've got serious concerns about the Commonwealth people, to be honest. But um, that's fine. Currently, Martha Khan's still got 34% of the vote. But she is 82. So under the, the Democles sword hanging over her head. Um, you are Glory Initiative, Free Elections Movement. Okay, so we've got... I, I think I'm going to support Martha. Because we've got, if we have a look at the... Yeah, so the free elections movement is the egalitarian party, faction. And currently they're bringing in 1.3 influence. So I think I'm going to spend some influence on just making sure that Martha gets in. 50%. And that drops uh, the, the the jellyfish turtle party to 18%, which I feel a bit bad about. Uh, you know... Bagugi, you have you've done more than we could have asked for, but you are quite aggressive for a floating turtle jellyfish, and I just don't think you are the best person for leader at this point. 
So thankfully, Martha Khan has got in once again. Uh, I, I don't know if she'll make it through her entire... through her entire election period. She might drop dead at any time. And then I think it, it looks like the, the floating jellyfish party is, is pretty much on the way to the top at this rate. So we, we might have a floating jellyfish as leader of the Commonwealth, which I'm, I'm going to be honest, um, I didn't see happening quite so soon. But these things happen. It, that's Stellaris, baby. Uh, unfortunately, Layla Mills has dropped dead at 85. So we're going to have to get another new scientist. Son of a... So expensive. I only just managed to get energy under control. Jesus. Um, the high buy. The how buy? The high, yeah, uh, Ruben. I, I, can't, I keep coming back to Ruben. I like his eagerness. He's eager. He costs less. He's willing to take a pay cut just to be involved. I feel... Oh, 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 Ruben, you're in. You're in and you're at the arse end of the galaxy. You're going to be slowly surveying systems, but that's okay. Get on with it, buddy. You're in. You're part of the... You're, part of the, you're, you're in the party, Ruben. Oh, so, so good. Uh, fortunately, we are going to have... Uh, yeah, the HMS Franklin is on is on route. Isabel is on her way to uh, lend some assistance. We've got the uh, Dingle, is it the Dingleberry, Dingle Ball, Dingle whatever it is, Dingle Dangle, Dingle Dale. That's one. Uh, the Dingle Dale is on its route as well. We've got the HMS Mackerel just constructing some stations in Baranic while we're waiting for these systems to be surveyed. Uh, we want to make as much territory grab there as possible. We're also making some territory grabs down here, but I do need some more energy. Um, so I'm going to send this construction ship to, to build some energy. I would like to grab the core dip system. And I do also want to grab this system over here, which has those uh, those two planets of people who bombed each other back to the Stone Age. So I'd, I'd like to raise them up and get them in the Commonwealth because it's the Commonwealth isn't all humans and floating turtle jellyfish, you know. It's it's about diversity. So Martha Khan has developed new skills. Uh, home in the sky traits. That's good. Where are you, Martha? Martha? Martha, there you are. Right, so you decrease module build cost and upgrade costs. That's very nice. You're expansionist and champion of the people. Very good. And we've got a new tradition as well. Now, I was a little bit concerned. Well, the Agarians, how are the... Right, let's check on the Agarians. Uh, contacts. So, Madari, uh, you are equivalent... Inferior, equivalent, inferior, and the Agarians are all equivalent. Okay, so I'm not overly concerned just at this moment about our military. So maybe I want to go prosperity, maybe harmony. Dominion, near. Nah. Do we want to have, like, a sudden growth spurt, if you know what I mean? Do we want to go expansion? I do like harmony. Prosperity is very nice because it's going to help. I mean, energy output increased by 5%. In addition, trading hulls produce one additional energy. That is very nice. I'm tempted to go Prosperity. Well... I mean, we are going to be bordering some rivals, so maybe that Unity output would be nice. So maybe we go... Let's go Warrior Mindset, because that's just going to help us defensively as well. System not that, survey concluded. Not that... Th thank, thank you. Um, not that... Well... Let's get Rite of Conquest. Let's get let's, Rite of Conquest. The ancient Rite of Conquest is a universal truth that is no less relevant now than it was when our civilization established dominion over our home world. Woe to the vanquished. Claim influence costs reduced by 20%. Not really helpful right now, but it will be eventually. 
apparently the United Zakplot Council want a research agreement. They also want me to give them some minerals, which is fine. I've got a lot of minerals. Um, 50, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. We'll go with that. Thanks, guys. It's nice to have friends. That should actually uh, help with the Institute of Advanced Sciences as well, because... Oh, they're, they're unhappy because we don't have syn synths. Oh, it's Austin. Austin's in control of the Institute of... I, yeah, I knew he would be. Bloody hell. Uh, we've got science without board, so we need more research um, thingies. We should... Do we have synths yet? We don't have synths, do we? We should probably get some to cheer up the, the people who like want to be robots. Probably do that. I think, I think we can. I think we can do that. We'll do that next. And apparently now they want an active sensor link. Um... All right. Sure. Uh, so that should allow us to see all their space. Oh, hello. <gasps> There's a fucking hell gate there. There's an L gate there. We do want an L gate. You can also see a lot of this space. There's a continental world down there. That'd be quite nice. There's an ocean world there. That would be quite nice. Uh, tropical world there. That'd be fine. Arid world. But more importantly, there is an L gate. We have found an L gate. So we definitely need to grab that ASAP. So you're heading down there. Do I like that? No, because they are quite, if they they can all they can cut me off fairly soon. Okay, grab that one. Grab that one. Okay, we need to grab this system here ASAP because until we grab that, they could cut us off. If that's a construction ship. No, it's a science ship. It's an unknown science ship as well. Interesting. So there could be another empire. Oh, hello. Yes, there is another empire around here. So we need to move fast. Jeez, they've explored quite a bit, haven't they? They've met someone down here as well. Can we see how many empires are in contact with? They've only met one. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we could offer them migration. No, they wouldn't want one. But, you know, maybe eventually they would. And we could get some of their little little peoples in our empire. That would be fun. Uh, but first, HMS Franklin. Yes, we need to do that. Basically, we need to um, survey. Survey. We need to, we need to daisy chain here. Not ideal, but daisy chain. It looks like uh, we could grab this little chunk down here. If we could kind of grab maybe this bit here, I would be quite happy with that. It's quite a nice little chunk there. And uh, we do need to grab some... Well, we got some energy. Energy's okay at the moment. So what I might do is I might create Wolverhampton as its own little uh, doobry what's it its own little sector so let's get a mineral processing plant there let's get a mining network there and then we will create a sector so can't do it there can i no i need to go to expansion planner no planets and sectors that's what i want to do create new sector put wolverhampton in its own sector Yes, that's going to make me unhappy, but that's okay. Right, so let's have a look at the sectors. The Wolverhampton sector is currently actually okay with most things. We could assign a new leader, except that would cost me all my monies and would be bad. So as long as Wolverhampton's fit out, uh, we could do that maybe. So Wolverhampton's getting 13 energy, 5 minerals and six food and that's fine so they're, they're okay they're okay just by themselves there and we can call that um wolverhampton sector there we go now that does mean that we freed up uh one of our 
planets, control planets, which means we can go and settle this place, the genocide planet. So let's go and set down right there. Easington, Caledonia, well, Hibernia, Great Grimsby. Yeah, sure, why not? It's now called Great Grimsby. That's that's my decision. That's what I'm going with. It's all good. The hierarchy of Gulk. Apparently, new contacts. Hello there, honor bound warriors. They're fanatic militarist and spiritualist. I bring greetings from the Grand Marshal Book Nukar. The undisputed ruler of the hierarchy of Gulk. Respect our borders and keep out of our affairs, and perhaps our mighty fleets will refrain from visiting your world. They will not like me at all. Uh, we shall probably greet you in battle. Construction uh, completed. Let's have... A, they're not very big, are they? Hello. Oh, you don't actually mind me too much. They just think I'm materialist fools, but they're actually okay. Uh, they've got some people they don't like nearby. They don't like the Midari Hordes. They've met them. And they've also met two other empires which must be somewhere around here be my guess they probably met this one over here which i found it's unidentified uh ship is probably one of theirs but yes there's there's more empires nearby i need to be careful of that i also need to expand over here I need to be careful about my energy though the Anthurian societal shift. We have seen a d definitive movement towards a more militaristic society by the various Anthurian governments. Their standing military forces, such as they are, are becoming more professional in nature. That probably won't help them survive a nuclear war. But, you know, they will thank us one day, assuming they don't nuke the shit out of each other. Uh, let's have a quick look. So, uh, militarist, xenophobe. Can actually just see here, can't we? So they're now materialist militarist. So actually what we could do is, because I think that's even these guys, isn't it? Yes, so they're now materialist militarist, which means they will naturally drift towards those two. So even if they're xenophobes at the moment, they will eventually drift towards either materialist or militarist. So what we can do, now we're happy with, with sort of that, is we can go to back to passive observation. We, we've indoctrinated them the way we want them to go. They're no longer going to be xenophobic. So now we switch that off and let them, you know, just see what happens. I mean, we could, you know, covert infiltration potentially eventually one day or technological enlightenment, but we don't have that at the moment. So it'd be fine. It's fine. We'll go with that. Ah, oh, the... Mal Weagol Nation. Look like a Zeltec horde. Uh, we that the Mal Weagol Nation, minions of the wise Primarch Museg. Our aim is to build an efficient society through the use of technology, and we are always keen to study new alien tech civilizations to see what can be learned from them. They are xenophile fanatic materialists. So they'll get on, we'll get on with them. Yeah, okay, we met them twice. Yeah, yeah. Three times. Three times a three-headed Hydra. Uh, the Midori Horde have insulted us. We have evaluated Prime Minister Martha Khan as a candidate for joining the Midori Horde. Sadly, we must inform you that membership requires a rudimentary brain. Burn. God, you're such dicks. Oh, I'm going to assault you back. Insult. Are you in great physical pain or is that your thinking expression? Boom. Have it. Oh, and Vivisandai warriors sighted. For several months now, we received scatter reports of small numbers of blah, 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 blah. Yes, okay. Kelvin Melstrom, where are they? They're over there. Okay, they're miles away. That's fine. Attempt to contact them. Uh, oh, it's it's Groot. Hai more Dao. Oh, Christ. Uh, end transmission. It's fine. Um... Apparently we've counted more aliens. Oh god, they're all they're all oh it's aliens all over the place. Oh these guys, we've actually met them. That's fine. We know about them. Do we? Wait, no, no, we don't. They're more aliens. Interesting. Oh shit. Right, we need to we need to grab this space ASAP. We've already got uh one of our construction ships going over there. We need to get one of them over here. Let's get you over there. We've got two, is it two yeah, both science ships now 
dashing about, surveying systems as soon as, as quickly as possible, because we want to grab this L gate at the uh, Lusage Black Hole. We've got the Trich United Systems, who are Vulcans, or elves, depending on your point of view. They are actually exactly what we are. Egalitarian militarist materialist. So greetings from the Trich United Systems Council. Daika Napovon is our elected representative, but in truth, all citizens, blah, 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 blah. Yes, okay. Apparently every single time we meet an alien, we have to meet them three times, because that's a thing. Okay, let's check out some of these people we've met. Let's check them by how much they like us. So, uh, Zach Block Council, they really like us. Tretch United Systems, they like us. And the Mal Wegol Nation also like us. So we've got sort of three... Um, you know, I, I thought we were going to jump into a whole bunch of people who hated our guts. But in fact, actually, sort of quite friendly. It's quite this, this end of the galaxy is far more friendly than ours. It's unlucky. Uh, something I also noticed was there's this empire down here, and it might... I, this might be a... Um, oh, it's a ruin sentry array. So the shattered remnants of what was once an extremely powerful sentry array, despite its age, the megastructure's antennae are, for the most part, structurally intact. With the right technology and a large amount of resources, the array could potentially be restored to working order. So this empire has ended up with a sentry array and also, it, whatever's this, what is this? A ruined science, are you shitting me? It's the ruined science nexus. A ruined science nexus, although its insides were stripped clean by looters eons ago, the megastructure's main hull is mostly intact with the right technology and a lot of resources it could potentially be refurbished. So they've got two ruined megastructures within one, two, three, four, five, six systems of each other. It looks like the Agarians might actually reach it. But this empire's definitely got the sensor array in its, uh, in its in its empire's borders, which is lucky for them. Bugger. It's alright. Right. Maybe maybe they're friendly. Maybe they're friendly. So we've picked up UV lasers. Ultraviolet lasers are updated and more powerful version of their blue predecessors. Accurate and destructive, these weapons are capable of inflicting great damage. So I like. Uh, let's grab. I think active countermeasures. Sentinel point defense. Does that seem like a good idea? The best defense is a good offense. Hull mounted countermeasures against missiles and strike craft are often essential for larger and slower military vessels. I, I feel like anyone carrying missiles, we need something to defend ourselves against. So let's grab the active countermeasures. That's only 21 months, so that's not too bad. And two things just happened. We've encountered communique from a previously unknown spacefaring empire that called themselves the Trap. Pokean Bloodborne. Oh, that doesn't sound good. They came to have learned of existence by listening. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, yes, you are fanatical purifiers. Quake and fear, alien scum for your doom approaches. The Trapokian Bloodborne will cleanse this galaxy of every misbegotten Xeno culture uh, that pollutes it with its presence. Parliament shall burn. Uh, we should not be held back, you creepy bug people. We've also found another... Uh, oh no, this is us finding the L gate, I think. So we've encountered another abandoned gate, but this time near Zypok Vortex. It appears to have been built entirely by microscopic nanites of an unknown design. Unlike the previous structure, this gateway has been significantly altered since its initial construction. Its connection to the rest of the network has been severed. Instead, the only valid destination is an uncharted group of stars just beyond our galaxy that has been designated the L cluster by our astronomers. Although the gateway emits a faint power signature, it has been deliberately locked into some kind of maintenance loop that prevents its activation. Until we find some way of aborting this process, the L cluster will remain beyond our reach. Intriguing. Research concluded. So that's very exciting. I don't know quite where that one was that we've blundered into. Because I don't think it might have been one of our might have been one of these guys blundering into the system and us getting the event because we've just spotted it. Um, but we're on our way to the L cluster in, in the Lesuja system. So we're going to grab that ASAP. Uh, that's where our science ships are currently en route. So we're just kind of scooping up the, the systems behind them as, as they go. And we've picked up a tech, uh, the stellar expansion, so that's good. Uh, could get colonial centralization, that could be nice. 
Uh, deep crust engineering is not a huge issue. Claim mere hab hab bit. Oh, well, that could actually be. That could come in useful. It's not very expensive. Okay, let's get atmospheric filtering. By adjusting atmospheric filtering on a per site basis to better filter out undesirable elements, colonial living conditions may be improved. I do like improved living conditions, and energy is continuing to be an issue. God damn it! An alien nation is hailing us. The Sari Union of Territories. Hello. Uh, you guys are Federation builders, so actually you're going to be okay with us. Well met friends, we are the Visari Union of Territories, a nation built on the principles of peaceful coexistence and individual freedoms. Prime Minister, the current head of our government has expressed a sincere hope for a lasting friendship between our two peoples. Well... We shall not... Uh, no, Martha Khan speaks on behalf of the Commonwealth people. Uh, let's have a look. Where are they? Do they like us? They do like us. Okay, and where are they? So they're over there. Okay. So we've potentially got some people to be friends with, which is nice. On the other hand, we're bordering quite a few people who don't like us at all, which is bad. But we do also have an Elgate, which is good. So very much swings and roundabouts so far for the Commonwealth. The war has erupted. Oh, the Trapokian Bloodborne and the Malwegal Nation have actually gone to war. This is interesting. So the Bloodborne are there and the nations are there, which means they do have some crossover... Now, they haven't captured... I wonder if there's something nasty in this system. That's a potential. I wonder if we can get uh, off a trade deal. Can we get a research agreement? No, you don't like uh, neutral attitude. Okay. What about information? What about an active sensor link? You're not against it, are you? Can we get one for 10 years? And I'll give you some minerals to help. Let's give you 500 minerals. I can do that. Let's get an active sensor link, just so we can see what's going on, basically. Uh, so, it looks like their fleet is not very strong at all, by the looks of it. So they've got destroyers, which have got lots of point defense on them. Uh, in fact, so do their crew. I'm not... They, they seem to be focused a lot on missile defense, which is going to be fine, uh, as long as the Bloodborne don't use anything but missiles. Otherwise, they could be in a lot of trouble. Uh, but at least we can see what's going on, so that's nice. Uh, Zach Plot Council wants a non-aggression pact, which I am more than happy to go along with. Um, I'm hoping to get them as allies, potentially, along with maybe the Union of Territories. I'm not sure the Malware Gold Nation is going to survive. I think they're going to lose this war quite hard. Knowledge is the key to the universe. So we've picked up Sentinel Point Defense. Uh, that's nice. We could grab the Plasma Thrower next. I do quite like the Plasma Thrower. Maybe Auxiliary Fire Control, though. It's, it doesn't cost that much. Um, increases our chance to hit. Let's go Plasma Thrower. I like things that throw plasma. Uh, in the meantime, we can actually go and... Uh, new design for our destroyers. And we're going to go for a... Just going to get a point defense ship. Something like that. And we're going to call it the Millbrook. Millbrook class point defense. Yep, sounds good to me. We'll do that. So we've got the Millbrook and the Gibraltar prize. So the Millbrook is very much a, a picket ship. It's going to defend the rest of the fleet against incoming missiles. Uh, do I want it to have an auto cannon? That's the question. They're quite short range, aren't they? So range, where's range? The range is thirty. The range is only forty for the small UV laser. To be honest, maybe I give it. Maybe I'm going to give it coil guns just to give it that little bit more. Well, I don't know. Would it be better with the auto? Because then everything's got thirty. 
Okay, well, let's just go with that for the moment. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what to do for best, but we'll, we'll go with that. Is the key to the universe. So we've picked up atmospheric filtering, so that's more habitability. Uh, oh, could we get vitality boosters? Could... Could um, Martha Khan, could she survive a little bit longer? She's currently 85. If we get that, she might last a few more years. That's an option, isn't it? Let's get vitality boosters. Where the body fails, science intervenes. There we go. We're going to try and keep Martha alive for as long as possible. Uh, we've got open borders with these guys. Who the crap are you? I didn't meet you, did I? Um, okay. Oh, so. Oh, right. Okay, so this is... So these guys must have been on their, um... Oh, dear, they're starving. Uh, these guys must have been a, a primitive civilization that has managed to reach space. So they're under the protection of the Malwegel nation. I mean, considering they're quite close to the borders of the Bloodborne, I don't know how safe they are, but um, that's fine. Looks like the, the Malwegel Nation fleet is on the move. I think they're going to try and defend themselves. We haven't seen any fleet from the Bloodborne yet, but when they do meet, it, it could be messy for the Malwegel. Oh, no. No, Martha. It, we, we were so close to pumping you full of drugs. Ugh. Unfortunately, Martha Khan has died at the ripe old age of 85, and that does mean a new election is underway. And as I as I suspected, the the floating total jellyfish party it has stormed ahead in the polls to 28. He's it, you have to give it to him. He has he's worked very hard. He has worked very hard. Um, he does command. I mean, he's quite likely to win as well, and that would be. Austin comes, I mean, mm. how much influence have we got? It's quite a bit. Pocket. Bagugi for Prime Minister, 44% chance. There we go. See what happens. Construction complete. Ah, uh, despite, despite Bagugi's best efforts, unfortunately, Henry Ryan has become Prime Minister of the Commonwealth. Uh, let's have a quick check. Henry Ryan, there he is. He's 84, so he's probably going to drop dead fairly soon as well. Uh, he is resilient. Oh, he's he's probably unlikely to drop dead then. And champion of the people. So that's that's good. Uh, let's have a quick... Can we see... I don't... It's difficult. I don't know whether it's... Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Right, society research. Who do we have? Who do we have? We could get William... BT. No, we can't. We don't have enough energy. Oh, tits. We don't have enough shit. Um, okay, what we're going to do, Isabel Hall, we're going to grab you because we're quite close to getting to the, to the L gate. And that's basically what my objective was. So one ship that can't do surveying is fine just until we get that 200 energy that oh oh wait what we can do what we bloody well can do is we can go and speak to the mutigan merchant hello guys i would like to trade for energy credits um i mean i just want i literally just want a one-off 20 minerals for 10 at... Um, yeah, all right, we'll do that. That is all. Off you go. Okay, that should help us get some energy quickly, and I can always cancel it later if I want to. It is going to help me get uh, relations with that particular uh, trading guild, and they will then give me um, some sort of uh, resources that I can only get from them later on. So I, I feel like it's worth it. Minerals at the moment isn't really an issue. Oh, God damn it. Now Mark Jan's dead as well. Uh, oh, my. Okay, I've got enough money to get another guy. Who? What was he in? He was in engineering. Right, so let's get... 
Cowellan Murray. I guess. Um, do I get one in? Okay, that. Mm. Okay. You're old. You're 51. That's only 30. That's like 29 years of good stuff I'm going to get from you, and then you're going to drop dead like everyone else. You all leave me eventually, you bastards. Okay, we're going to get you. Oh, okay. oh you, you know, he's, do he's doing rocketry stuff, so that's good. And we've got Nadia, who's a, who's maniacal, and Isabel, who has a spark of genius. So that's, uh, that's looking so far so good. But I do need... I'm, I'm, out, I'm out of energy. I need more energy. Energy is really the problem I've got here. Great Grimsby, how... 31 months. Oh, so long. Well, how about that? The Malwegol Empire is actually going on the offensive against the Bloodborne. That's brave. Well, they're plucky. I'll give them that. I don't know how well they're going to do once the actual Bloodborne fleet turns up, but we haven't spotted it so far, and it looks like... Is this one of their planets? So it looks like they've got a planet here, which isn't very... There's only three pop, pop on it. It's not very heavily defended. The Malwago could well invade and win, which is interesting. A battered fleet of small civilian vessels carrying Gulk Furuki... Fleeing from the Undentified Empire have arrived in our space. After we supplied them with food and provided medical attention to their wounded, the refugees were allowed to settle on Wolverhampton Prime. Poor buggers. These ragged and frightened refugees are survivors from an extermination program being carried out by the Ocatan authorities against their species. They only made it out thanks to the efforts of a hastily organised underground railroad and a few sympathetic merchant skippers. Oh, hello. Okay. Let's have a look at Wolverhampton Prime then. Uh, there they are. Okay, so that's that's these guys so they are industrious they're communal and they're sedentary so actually that's that's pretty nice we could pop them over there and uh, they will do some mining for us so that's good that's good to see uh what do they like they like ocean world so actually we do have an ocean world within our space don't we uh where was it continental ocean world there we go so actually, they we could, we could use them to colonise this planet, and they would love that. They'd be fully on board with that. Who was, was it? The, was it these guys? No. Who was the penguins? No. Was it these guys? These guys. Yes. Yeah, so these are the gulp. So who's exterminating them? I guess whoever's that is. If they're exterminating them, that suggests they're quite aggressive. Do we really have... So we've already got one, two... We've already got three sort of hyper-aggressive races. Have we got a fourth one in this corner as well? This corner of the galaxy is very, very angry. This one is a big love-in. This one's a little bit meh. But this one, I think, is, is l ludicrously angry at everything. Because we've got the Midari Horde, or Twitter. We've got the Zeltec Horde. We've got the... Trakpokian Bloodborne and then I suggest we probably got another sort of genocidal species here as well so that's fun but it does mean that we've actually picked up uh, some some other races and these guys are actually really nice they're, they're always ha happy and they're industrious so we get more minerals from them so actually having them on this planet is is perfect ideal more of them please Research concluded. And uh, we picked up Plasma Thruster. Uh, we want to get... Do I want Rail Gun? I mean, it's a hostile galaxy out there, isn't it? Maybe building build speed would be nice. Um, assembly patterns. Rapid iterations in construction stimulations. Uh, simulations. Determine the... Op well, maybe stimulations. Who knows? Uh, determines the optimal component assembly patterns for each building project ahead of time. Plus 25% speed. Yes, let's go. Let's grab that. Koalan Murray, you're on it. Good job. Uh, Isabella Hall, she's trying to work, work out how she can make us all live longer. That's good. 
It's all good. Technology. What, what a wonder. Now, we have enough energy to get another scientist, so that's what we're going to do. Now, we've got Lola Warren here. She's only 31. Uh, she is carefree. And I think she's the youngest and also... Yeah, so let's get... I mean, is, is this ageist? Probably. No one tell HR. Uh, let's get let's get Lola. She was a showgirl. Uh, something, something, something. Let's then... So, we've almost got to the Lusage black hole. In fact... Our construction ship is just building the um, required. Oh, there's a two world there. Uh, required starbase, and then that's all ours. So let's then send Lola over here, and then we'll send her to back survey these planets. Now we're not going to find any anomalies, unfortunately, because these have already been scanned by the AI. So they would have already done those. Uh, that's a little bit disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. And I would like to grab that one. And to be honest, if I could grab that little bit of space there. I think I'm happy with that. I was looking for an L gate, really, and I've grabbed that, so that's good. And now we're just kind of. I want. I would. I would like to get um, Shaula over there. That would be nice to have. I would also like uh, Sinistra. So if I could maybe grab Irimus down to Sue, Sinistra Apon. I'm not overly concerned about all this down here, to be honest. I think I've expanded enough. I've got a huge empire, probably bigger than it needs to be. But if I can grab that, and I would also like to colonize um, Ferrothon 3. In fact, the sooner we do that, the better. Because of this other empire here. Well, it's not an empire, but primitive species. Because if we have a planet in the same one, I don't think they can block us. So maybe we should do that. Maybe we should do that. So if we go to Wolverhampton, we can see we've got the Gulk Faraki here so let's colonize and we will um it's not really a good place to colonize is it maybe we'll just grab this one down here and we will call it a uh, newbury shetland gower mm, dudley nah red ruth that's nearby we'll call it red ruth red ruth is quite wet and it's full of penguin people so yes that'll do so the Zeltec Horde and Midori Horde have gone to war. They're both ravenous hives, and they're both trying to kick the shit out of each other. How do I feel about that? Um, you know what? I'm fine with it. They've actually only got one space lane between them. I'm kind of glad. In, in I mean, how's the Zeltec Horde? How are they? They are superior to me. Equivalent, superior, equivalent. Okay, and the Midari Horde? Equivalent, equivalent, inferior. I suggest that the Zeltec Horde are going to win that one. Um, but it looks like the Malwegel Nation and the, the Bloodborne have... Looks like they're going to have a little engagement as one of the Bloodborne fleets has arrived in the, in the Imuthin system, which is on the borders of Malwegal space. It looks like their fleets are on route to intercept, so it should be interesting to see how this pans out. Ugh, Nadia Hussein's dropped dead now. Delightful. Okay, and I can't afford another one. So we're just going to have to wait. It's a problem. You just get this death wave where all your scientists just drop dead all at the same time. In fact, has Austin died as well? I didn't even notice him die. That's how much I care about Austin. Nada. Literally nothing. Uh, Parliament. Oh no, Austin is still alive. Was I just not... Oh, there he is. He was hiding. Well, I say hiding. Alright, oh, because I was recruiting... Right, no, no, yeah, so... Oh, yeah, okay, good. So, okay, so Austin's still alive, although he, he is, he's he got 0.8% chance to drop dead, which means we're going to need two leaders fairly soon, because I, I really need two governors. I've only got one. And I need another researcher, and I don't have that, so it's it's not looking great. And the Melwaggle and the Bloodborne are about to kick the shit out of each other.
So it looks like the Mwegol failed to uh, defeat the Bloodborne force and uh, they've had to retreat, which is not good news, although they do have another fleet. So it kind of depends on how much damage they took in that engagement. Will the Morwegel nation survive their war with the Bloodborne? Is the northwest quadrant of the galaxy entirely filled with very angry people? And will penguins like living in Red Ruth? We found some friends, or at least people who didn't immediately want to string us up, which is basically the same thing, but will these friendly races survive the onslaught of so many genocidal species? Will the genocidal species kill each other? Did anyone notice I forgot to check the second wormhole? No, I'm fairly sure no one lost their shit over that. Find out what happens and if I remember to check that other wormhole next time.